Shalom, shalom, Mishpachai. This is Yerid Yal checking in. Uh, I wanted to do a video on one of my teachers that I had from a institution that is not a religious institution. One of the institutions that I went to to get my associate's degree before I went to uh, the um, university or before I went to the religious university. And so this story is about teachers who are secretly satanic. So I had a teacher that was secretly a devil worshiper. I, no way around it wasn't a uh, like a assumption or, you know, anything like that. Okay, well, he must be a devil worshiper. No, he was a devil worshiper. And he got caught, you know, you know, doing some witchcraft to the classroom. So let me explain. So this teacher, and I'm not going to name the teacher, but he taught a class called Psychology of Religion. And you guys, he tricked me because I thought the class was Psychology and Religion, that it was going to go into the history of psychology and how it, you know, played with religion and, you know, how it affected religion and how religion affected psychology. I thought it was going to be more on those lines. So I said, okay, well, this could be interesting. Uh, and in this, you know, secular university that I was in, there weren't a lot of classes that, you know, just were religious classes. There was one class that was um, early Christian thought. So I took that one. There was another class, um, psychology of religion. I took that one. And then I believe the only other religious class that they were giving, and this is why I only spent one semester there, the only religious class that they were giving, the only other one was Satanism. And so if you can imagine these three religious classes, early Christian thought, psychology of religion and Satanism, uh, they weren't taught by the same teachers, they were taught by different teachers. But um, yeah, this is the way that the, um, the curriculum was at this particular school. They didn't have any true religious courses um, that were going to be of any benefit to me. So I took the two that were not Satanism, right? And it turns out that one of them out of the two was Satanism. So let me explain. So the teacher that taught this class actually also wrote the textbook for the class. So it was this big, thick textbook. And one of the students that, uh, you know, I met later on uh, that was in this class, you know, wanted to be impressed with this teacher because he wrote the book that the textbook, but you know, the, the textbook that belongs to the class. Um, so he, so this particular student was impressed that he was the one that actually wrote the textbook. But of course, anybody who can write can write. So anybody can write a textbook. It don't take a, a whole lot to do that. Um, I had one leg on my couch, so what we used it for was to, to prompt, though I had one leg missing on my couch. We used that book to, to prompt the couch up even. And that's what I told this particular person. They said, oh, well, it's a great book. I said, yeah, it's a great book. For sure, it's a great book to prop my couch up with. <laughs> so, but let me explain, let me explain. So this teacher taught psychology of religion and not psychology and religion. And on the first day in class, he said uh, to the class, and this was to really throw everybody off. He says, I don't care what religion you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care in this class about the religious aspect and whether or not to say it's true or false or not. We approach the class as religion from a psychological aspect. What things have to be present in your mind in order for religion to be necessary? So you see the difference between psychology and religion and psychology of religion. The psychology of religion studies the psychological reasons behind the emergence of religion, which automatically posits that religion is a psychological manifestation, right? So whether he says that he believes or not, whether he says that, you know, anybody believes doesn't matter, <clears throat> that we're just going to discuss the reasons why religion exists on a psychological level means that he's coming from the perspective that religion is a psychological manifestation, an occurrence that, that really doesn't have anything to do with the physical world, but that only exists in the mind of man, which means they're coming from a, 
a perspective that religion is false, right? So without saying it, he's coming from a not only a secular perspective, but a satanic perspective saying that all religions are manifestations of the mind, right? And so of course I had problems with this right away, but this is how, this is how um, teachers like to play games. And then this guy wasn't no regular teacher either. He was an old guy. He looked to be, he looked to be about 70 years old. You know, he was skinny, had a hunchback. He had a big, white, long beard, white guy. He had a long ponytail. He had big, thick glasses. And he kind of talked like this, huh? He kind of talked like this. So he was a crazy looking person anyway. So he kind of was just, you know, he looked like one of the old hippies from the 60s and 70s. Um, but he was a, a doctor. He had a PhD in psychology and I think also in religion. Um, so, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know exactly where he came from, but um, you know, people were interested in his class, not me. Once I figured out what it was all about, you know, I quickly was, you know, adversarial to him in the classroom and not in a disrespectful way, but in a real way. And so let me let me tell you some of the things that he talked about in this particular class. So one thing that he was really, really adamant about in the class was that um, that religions are manifestations of the mind and that in any context, people would have conjured religion if there wasn't one. Right. Regardless of all the spiritual manifestations, regardless of all the proofs around us, when we see things that, you know, shouldn't exist and things that are in order and all that uh, religion, as far as he was concerned, uh, openly, as far as he was concerned, was a an aspect of the mind. Right. And so what he wanted to do was compare all of these different religions in such a way to show them being symbolic. Right. And so one way that he tried to do that was through snakes, right? So, and this is where I'm, you know, this is where it really becomes clear that this guy was a Satanist because he went around in every religion looking for snake cults. And because there's a serpent entity that exists in the world that, you know, we know of from the garden, we know of from book of Revelation, we know that you'll be able to find a multitude of snake cults that'll be out there. But one thing that he tried to say was that Christianity was secretly a snake cult. And then he said that Judaism was also secretly a snake cult. But we know better than that. <laughs> he said that um, he said that Moses being, Moses being, hmm. We got some new kids out here. We gonna have to show them their boundaries. Moses being a, you know, when he was, when they lifted up to the serpent in the wilderness and looked at the serpent in the wilderness in order to keep the snakes off of him, he's saying that that was, that was initiation into a snake cult. And of course, me raising my hand, I'm sorry, we understand that, <laughs> that was symbolic, not from being in a snake cult, but from being in Egypt. We understand that Moses had these serpent problems to deal with when he led the army against Ethiopia from Egypt. So he would recognize the situation really clearly and understand and know what to do in the situation. That situation was for Moses particularly and for the children of Israel, not because Moses was the leader of a snake cult, right? But this is what he tried to say. And of course I automatically had problems with that. And you know, not only uh, did he say that there was a snake cult and associated with you know, devil worship, but he also, but, you know, he also neglected to say that there are snake entities or dragon entities that work for the father, right? Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah six, where uh, the seraphim takes the coal off of the altar and then puts it on his tongue and cleans his tongue and all that. So we know how that works. We know how the, um, the, um, the system of heaven works and we know it not to be a snake cult but of course not everybody in the class knows that so he's influencing people by the things that he's saying and putting you know a a doubt a doubting spirit in people's hearts from them not understanding 
And so he also, what he also did was connect the Christianity to a snake cult uh, by going around to all of these snake cult churches that take up snakes and if they don't bite you, you're holy. And if they do bite you, you're wicked. Uh, the Appalachian snake cults, right? So he embedded himself actually in one of those, you know, snake Christian churches where they, you know, where they pick up the poisonous snakes. And he gave stories about it and, you know, said that some people died and, you know, made it look as ridiculous as we know that it is, right? And of course, we know this to be a false prophecy concern or a false interpretation of a prophecy, you know, concerning um, the Messiah. And we know that, you know, some of those prophecies came to pass with Paul when he was bitten by the snake on the island of, was it uh, Malta? Melita, I think it's Malta. So we know that, um, but um, uh, but he his main his main focus was connecting these different snake cults and showing the ridiculousness of them, and then by doing that, also showing the ridiculousness of all religion because they're associated with these snake cults, right? And so what <laughs> and so what ended up happening in class, and this is how we noticed that he was sorry the sorry I got bumps on my face this is how we recognized that this particular teacher was a satanic teacher right uh, secretly satanic and this is me that recognized it because clearly these are signs that we look for these are signs that we watch for in society that um, or in in the classroom or with teachers you know to prove what they're really into and what they're really doing what their problems are, and what their you know, secret worship style is. And so we've been talking about snakes and talking about snake cults. And I've been, you know, kind of pointing out here and there the, the flaws with his psychological reasoning. And then I look up and then I look on his finger and he's got a cobra ring on his finger. He's got a snake ring on his, I think, on his ring finger, right? He's got a snake ring on his ring finger. And so with this, with him having the, you know, talking about these snake cults, talking about Moses being some sort of snake leader, talking about these Christian snake cults, but then you have a snake ring on your finger, what's that signify? If you're so familiar with these serpent cults, then you must also be a part of a certain cult, a serpent cult yourself, right? And so I noticed the ring on his finger. And I didn't say anything about it at first, right? So I noticed it and then kept it to myself. Then kept it to myself, you know, until I could bring it out. And so he's talking, talking, talking. And, you know, I'm countering a lot of the things that he's saying in class. So much so that he had to say, wait, 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 wait to the end of the class before you ask questions. I need to get this out. I need to get this out. Well, I'm not trying to have him wait to get out all these different lies. Now I'm in this class that I recognize as a satanic class. So I, you know, got to be respectful still, but I've got to combat the concepts that he's saying in the hearts of the people that are all around. And it's so much so that, you know, some of the Christians that were in there that didn't understand what was going on would come to me and say, hey, I appreciate the things that you're doing and saying because I feel like I've got to guard my heart in this class, you know, from all of this, these doctrines. And this is what the class was designed to do, right? There was even a figure that he gave in the class about college itself, that 70% of the people that go to college, you know, lose their religion. After they graduate from college, 70% of people do not return to church. So what it appears to be is that college in, in many aspects is an atheism machine to get you out of the concept of religion and the concept of doing things religiously, especially going to church and, and worshiping, right? And so I noticed the snake ring on his finger and I wait because I don't want to necessarily bust him out in front of the whole class, but I'm definitely trying to ask him about it. And so, you know, we get into a joust at the end of class and people are up and milling around and like a, a not a, a real joust, but like a verbal joust. And I said, well, you you know, you're wrong about Moses being the leader of a snake cult. You're just trying to really play these people out. It's you that's got the snake ring on your finger. And again, <laughs> again, y'all, when you, you, we've talked about people snapping their heads in this, in this, uh, on this channel. 
you know, snapping your head. They're not Israelites snapping your head. Ah, well, that makes sense. You've done a bad thing. You know, this older white man snapped his head and said, and looked at me like this. Like I wasn't supposed to see the ring. Like I wasn't supposed to notice it, right? I said, you the one with the snake ring on. And he went, and he was like, you noticed that? I said, I sure did. I noticed that you got a snake ring and you're waving it all in front of the classroom. What, you trying to put a spell on us? And he was like, ha, 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 yeah. And he didn't say, he didn't like admit to doing that, but he was like, you know, like he had been caught doing something. I said, you're the one with the snake ring on. You, you talking about all these other people in a snake call. You're the one with the snake ring on. And he just snapped and looked at me and said, ha, 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 ha. So you noticed that, huh? I said, yeah, I sure did. And so I waited for him after class. <laughs> And as he's coming out, me and the guys, a couple of the other guys that, you know, are cognizant of what's going on in this class are talking, right? And so he comes out of the class and he looks at me and, you know, I'm still dressed in the Eastern garment. You know, I've, I've dressed my entire college career in Eastern attire. So people know what time I'm on already. And so he comes up and he looks at me and he's like, uh, I said, yeah, uh, there you go, Mr. Snake Charmer right there. And... Uh, he said, you're the one that noticed it. Like me noticing it and knowing what it represents makes me a part of whatever it is that he's doing with it, right? So in the conversation that we had after class, I said, you're the one wearing it. What does it have to do with, I, uh, with me, what you're doing, that I noticed it, you're wearing it? He said, well, you noticed it though. Like I'm not educated in spiritual matters, right? We're supposed to know the devices of the devil. We know Solomon, or we have, you know, legends that Solomon had a, de uh, a ring that would be able to control demons after he, you know, left the worship of Yao and went to the worship of all the, the, the abominations of the, the Gentiles from his wives. Um, we know, or we don't know for a fact, but we have legends in Jewish history that Solomon had a ring that could control spirits, right? And so we know that that concept exists in the pagan world. And for him to be wearing it and, you know, downplaying biblical culture, saying that it's a snake religion, but he's a member of a snake society, you know, means that he's really, really, really out to deceive people and was trying to somehow brainwash the class with the ring, right? And I just caught it because when he was caught, he, <laughs> he began to act guilty. He began to act as if he was caught doing something. And so we do have to assume what it was that he was doing with the snake ring and why he's waving it over people and, you know, talking all this snake cult stuff. The, and the assumption is that he's trying to instill in people some sort of satanic understanding and using magical means and psychological means and, you know, um, uh, you know, wordplay and false references, false equivalencies in order to do that. And so all of these things working together, you know, they call that practical magic, right? And this is what these Satanists do when they're trying to deceive a large group of people. They use every tool in their, in their, in their repertoire, you know, hand signs and, and, you know, black magic and rings and spells and music and you know, mis mistranslating, misinterpreting uh, the Bible, all of these different tools that they use to try to brainwash people into religion outside of true religion, right? And so we saw that. I saw that directly in this class, and it was being done in a hidden fashion because the class was called Psychology of Religion, and it came with a scientific approach from a true-to-life Satanist that was literally trying to brainwash his students with a serpent ring. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying, you guys? This is what we mean by hidden in plain sight. This is what we mean by um, religion in disguise, that people that are secular, people that are atheists, really have a religion, and it's the snake religion, and they just don't know that these people who are serpent people themselves are instilling this within them in a way that, in a way that's more, you know, technologically, psychologically advanced than they would be accustomed to. Do you guys understand that? So this particular teacher, again, just to recap a little bit, was a Satanist and worshiped in a snake cult 
and possibly the leader of a snake cult because he had that ring on his finger and was trying to brainwash the class, but was at the same time preaching against biblical philosophy, preaching against biblical understanding and, um, and you know, doing it in such a way as to seem scholarly. Do you see what I'm saying? Which is another big um, deception because in secret they are worshiping spirits. Do you see what I'm saying? They're, they're in, in public, they're saying that spirits don't exist they're figments of the imagination, but he's got that serpent ring on. So in secret, he's worshiping these <laughs> these serpent spirits. But, you know, praise Yah for the ability of discernment. And you hear what's going on out here, though. Praise Yah for the ability of discernment. Praise Yah to be able to see through all that mess and to be able to expose it, point it out um, as we are called to do. So, guys, this has been story number... Is it seven or six? One of those. And this was the secret Satanist teacher. Oh, and there's one other thing. This teacher, what he was doing was successful to a lot of different people. Because after I left that particular class and I started working at Amazon, remember I told you guys I worked at Amazon and I met a bunch of different religious people and we would always have religious conversations, you know, in between picking and doing the things for the job. Um, I met this girl that worked with me there at Amazon and lots of stuff going on out here. <laughs> um, and so this girl said, oh, I'm taking this class um, and it's called Psychology of Religion. I said, well, be careful in that class because the teacher is a Satanist and he is out to pull people away from religion. And, and this is the way that that works and happens. And she said, okay, yeah, yeah. So I'll make sure I'll guard myself. I talked to her again two months later. And she is now, she is now the, the apprentice of the class. And now she is not believing in the same things that she once believed in when we first started having conversations about spirituality way back before she started a class or as she was starting a class. So you guys... Even if, you know, I'm in the class and I'm pointing these things out to people, that's one semester at one point in time. Imagine people without understanding being in the class and just absorbing all the information and it having such an effect on people that it pulls them right out of their religion. This is what academia really is. If you're sending your children to college, you're sending your children to secular schools, this is what they're going to be teaching you. This is what you're going, you're, they're going to be infused with, this concept of anti-religion, this concept of psychology, um, to pull you away from what you believe in, even though the people that are teaching these things sometimes are themselves in the cult <laughs> that they're preaching against, right? Or that they're teaching against. All right, does that make sense, you guys? Watch out. All right, shalom, shalom. Shabbat shalom.